Hey guys, most of you guys know that Braylon is in the hospital right now. Um, I want to first and foremost say that if anybody is using any of our videos asking you for money, we would never ever do that. We're no. not. Um, it's somebody trying to do a scam or something. I've seen it briefly in a few comments on my post saying that we were asking for money and stuff like that and we would never. So if you see that, please report that. You guys should know 100% we would never ask you for anything other than your prayers and your support during this time right now. Uh, I kind of want to give you guys a brief rundown of what happened exactly and I hate that we are meeting under these circumstances again because I feel like I just had to make a sad video about my brother and unfortunately if you didn't see the news he did pass on December 17th. I did a tribute to him if you want to watch it. So I am to say the least a bit traumatized right now because I just watched my brother go through this but the circumstances are totally different. Um, so basically what happened, and I'm going to give you guys my timestamps that I can actually remember, yeah. is that Marco and I went to go see the Raiders versus Raiders, the 49ers. Yeah, Our 40. buddy had invited us out, so we went there and we were there all day, right? Then we came home and we started creating some content. I think I did like some fun video in a robe, whatever. So if you can imagine, I'm sitting here in my silk robe, my husband's sitting here in his satin, satin, whatever. We had our, you know, our if you can visualize it. We're sitting down in the living room with Braylon, Cannon, and Kaden. And I'm not gonna play the clip because it's very traumatizing, but I did like have it from our ring camera devices so I could show the doctors and stuff. But at 10.26 p.m., Braylon passed out. He kind of just like tilted over and hit his head on the um, coffee table. But, like, it wasn't but he was already hour. down. Like he was already on the ground watching television. So when he slumped over, we thought he was just tired and falling asleep. But no, he went like this and then he completely went backwards, fell. Before his head could even hit the ground, Marco immediately grabbed him up and we just started like, Braylon, Braylon, oh my God. A lot more hysterical than that. We were freaking the hell out because we knew he was going into cardiac arrest and he was going to die. Yeah, so we so, immediately got him out of the house because I didn't want Mark Cannon or Kaden to see their brother like that. Yeah, so, so traumatized. Because Marco was there, because last time Marco was actually in, um, last time Marco was on a meeting and I found Braylon, but he was more coherent. So this time it was not like that. This time, Marco was there, so I could immediately call 911. And I knew by the way of how Braylon actually looked that he needed 911. There was no way we were going to be able to, even if we got him out of the house in the car, it just was not. So no if way. you ever find anyone like that just completely passes out after running, after doing anything, goes unconscious, anything, do not try to take them to the hospital yourself. Lay their body flat on the ground and begin doing CPR. I don't care if you've never even done CPR before, just start pressing on their chest because initially what you're doing is you're causing the blood to continue to flow because the heart isn't doing this. So what you're doing when you're pushing down is you're pushing right on that heart and you're allowing that blood to flow right back to the heart, yes. right back to the lungs and the body. So what happened with Braylon was the, the heart had stopped for a while but nobody knew it because it's like silent. It doesn't give you any like pain or anything. No so or so the blood was just collecting in the heart, cooling, just big. It was just getting bigger and bigger until he finally fainted because it wasn't no oxygen going to his head or his legs. And so when, when we laid him down and we started doing the CPR, after about 60 seconds, blood started to come out of his mouth, out of his nose. So whenever I would go down to, you know, he bit my lip, he bit his lip, so there was more blood, but the blood was coming more because I would blow in to try to give him oxygen, but then like his nose was just coming out everywhere. So at this point I was actually kind of nervous because I felt like I'm doing everything I can and he's, he's not here. I have blood all over my face. I have blood all over my hand, yeah, all over so. my satin robe. So I need to say that's the most traumatizing part that felt like a movie. Was and so there was traumatizing, a traumatizing, right? Even YP had to stop, and then I got to go on. With the I couldn't CPR do it anymore. Him, I literally man. thought we lost him. Yeah. And and I was just like, so in the middle, get this, in the middle of us doing CPR, we're on the phone with 911. The first thing that you need to do when you call 911 is give your address immediately. I think that's what saved his life as well because yes. I didn't get around to like screaming, crying. I just immediately said, this is my address. This is the name. This is the age. This is what's going on. He's dying. Help please help, please help, get here fast. And I just kept repeating the address, repeating his name, saying, please hurry. 
So when the blood started coming, I, I just thought it was kind of over, like we lost him. Um, and, a, and then the phone died. So then I ran back inside to go get Marco's phone and I kind of had like lost hope. Yeah, but Marco she, came and I took kept, over at the CPR kept and he kept CPR doing it. While she went and going to find my phone. So mm -hmm. just to make sure that he kept oxygen. So his I, body. I was nervous that maybe they didn't hear the address and maybe they weren't on the way. And I, and I knew we didn't have time. So I ran back in the house to go get the phone to go call 911 again on Marco's phone. So I did that. I called 911. Within, guys, 1026, he was passed out. 1026, we got him over to the garage. By 1027, we started CPR. And by 1034 p.m., the paramedics were already at our house. So I believe you have to give your address immediately, anytime there's an emergency. But we also prevented any lack of oxygen from going to Braylon's brain and Braylon's um, body. So here's the other thing, right? So when you, um, when your heart stops, it's almost like if you think about you just pull the plug out of your computer and you don't like say restart or you don't say like shut down. So you kind of just pull the plug and then, you know, your computer kind of has to reboot, right? So that's Braylon's body at this point. But what happened, sadly, was they rescued him on the way to the ambulance. But he started breathing again on his own after the CPR and the bag mask and the oxygen. So they pulled the tube out. Well, then he was laying there in the ER. There's like 15 people all around his room and they come pull me. They came and told me, I want to let you know your son's alive. We have a pulse. You saved his life, you and your husband, and you're doing such an amazing job. Mm -hmm. And I just need you to be calm while we do our thing. So I'm like, okay, we're going to just be calm while you do your thing. Well, then she comes out. She's like, honey, I'm sorry. He's going into cardiac arrest again. I need you to come here, hold his foot, and talk to him. Pretty much telling me to say my goodbyes to my kid at this point. So I cry. I run back. I hold his foot. I say... Braylon, honey, come back. I said, come back in the name of Jesus. I said, you can do this, please. And he's right over there, so I don't want him to hear me. But I said, Jesus, I just started praying over everybody in there. I was lifting my hands up and I was just reaching, begging, saying, Jesus, please. And send your angels, guide these people's hands, and I'm by myself, and I have to tell my son goodbye. And so, um, all of a sudden they say, oh, we have a heartbeat. I just said, praise God. And, um, they hurried up and intubated him again. Here what ended up happening was his lungs were full of so much blood, and they took the tube out, and, um, it was too much on his heart, so his heart stopped again. So, um, anyways, he, uh, he's good now. And they, they got him stable enough that we could flight him over to Senna, um, the new hospital, where there's more better technology and pediatric cardiology things. A lot of babies come here that have, like, open heart surgery and stuff like that, so they're very specialized in this here. And um, when we got here, we weren't able to see him. And I was okay with that as long as he was alive. I don't need yes. to see him. Um, and so then we went and we stayed on this couch, this little couch, and we just like held each other all night. All night long. And then we woke up and we came to come see him in the morning. And the best thing, I mean, it hadn't even been 12 hours yet. And I knew that he didn't lack any oxygen to his brain because that's what had happened to my brother Joshua was he, he didn't have any oxygen to his brain for so long and it fried his brain and he became a vegetable and his kidneys stopped working. And so I was thinking this thing was going to happen to my baby. Oh, hi. No. Did he wake up? Oh, okay. He's waking up again. He tries to sit up a lot. It's so great to know that he can move. Um, so he has the most phenomenal nurse and the most phenomenal team. Um, Marco's with him right now.
buddy. Do you need to be suctioned? Do you want me to suction you? Yeah? Okay. Okay. You had a good sleep. You slept for like three, four good hours. Good job. Maybe broken in your mouth. Good job. Open up a little bit more. Yeah. Good job, good job Brayden. Good job. I can't necessarily remember where we're at. Day two was yesterday. No, day one was yesterday. Um, so pretty much when all that blood came out, a lot of it got into his lungs. A lot of it got to his head, which kept his brain oxygenized, but a lot of it got into his lungs. And so um, anybody that knows radiology or anything like that would know that if you look at an x-ray, if it's mostly white, that means that there's not a lot of black space of air like black means that there's air in there and white means that there's barely any and his lungs were full of white there was barely no air in there so he was essentially like drowning and suffocating in his blood but um they, that's what the ventilator's for they made me aware that it was going to take like 48 hours before the body would reabsorb it back into the bloodstream and we've seen the chest x-ray today which is almost two days later almost like a little bit after 36 hours later and his chest x-ray looks so much better so fast forward to what else happened um he's pretty much just been trying to heal his lungs he has a little mini pneumothorax which is like a little pocket in there that they're not too concerned about because it's only like 17 millimeters and they're believing it's going to absorb back into the body Mark has been here by his side. I have not left except for today for about half hour. I needed to go take care of something at the bank. Um, and what else? He has on these compression things so that he doesn't get a blood clot on his legs. He has uh, this ice therapy, which he was able to get his body temperature to come down now. So he's not at 100 degrees Fahrenheit anymore. Now he's like 98-ish. So they haven't had to do that. Um, his heart, the echocardiogram yesterday was disastrous. They said his heart had suffered so much trauma that they were very worried and he was in critical condition. The cardiologist came back today and he said that his heart is healing exactly how it's supposed to. So I truly believe that the prayers, the continuous constant support and love and everybody just lifting him up has really allowed him to have a miracle so quickly. Um, we're still in re the recovery phase right now and we're just waiting for uh, his lungs to get strong enough. We wanted to take the tube out today, but we're not gonna do that. They're gonna wait until tomorrow. We are requesting medical records from his biological father so that they have a better idea of what the heck is going on um, because they wanna prepare his body to go into surgery for a pacemaker, not a pacemaker. They only wanna do a defibrillator and I want them to put a pacemaker defibrillator, but they only wanna do one. And I told you guys before, I wanted just the defibrillator and nobody effing listened to me. And now my kid with a 50% chance of fatality, almost 50%. So i um, hoping that the medical records will be enough to convince the doctors to give my son adequate care and what he needs to survive. So that is where we're at. Braylon has sat up multiple times. He has been able to say hello, not hello, but like, yeah, okay. So here's the issue. The 
breathing tube is right against his vocal cords so it takes the vocal cords it takes the ability of him to speak out but once they take it out they say he'll be a little hoarse for a little bit <laughs> he was shivering really bad last night he was having really bad shivers because they're freezing him so that he wouldn't like um be too hot and then he not be able to recover so that's one thing with like heart patients they try to keep it very cool and calm in here um Braylon's holding up really well he does not deserve this he did nothing to deserve this um no kid deserves this and I'm just thankful to God that he's still here he's still alive because I thought that I was holding him and he was just gonna die in my arms and I was just gonna have this bloody disgusting vision in my head for the rest of my life of how I couldn't save my kid but God, God turned everything around. That's where we're at. I don't think I've missed anything. His kidneys are functioning perfectly fine. His brain is amazing. Neurologically, he's testing amazing. It's not been enough days to do an MRI yet. Um, so they're thinking like three to five days before the MRI. Um, pulling the, the tray, the ventilator thing out tomorrow and hopefully his body will be healed up enough. Hopefully we'll get to talk to him tomorrow more, like not more than just shaking his head and opening his hands and stuff. So that's kind of where we're at with him. Sorry this video is so long. I'm going to close it out. I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to post it like this. Um, I just, I don't have time. <laughs> but I love you guys. I wanted to keep you updated. And I hope that you guys have the most amazing day. Stay safe. Please, if you don't know CPR, learn CPR because it can literally save a life. Even when you think that it's not working, it's 100% working. I love you guys. Stay safe. And thank you for your prayers.